What's going on guys, Tim Russwick here, and today I wanna to talk about what is the number one most important thing that you should keep in mind when building games. This is something that I have kind of learned over the years in steps, in pieces. Um, I learned a little bit from my development side uh, when I would build technology for companies. I learned a little bit from the marketing side of trying to entice people to purchase things and try and get them to understand the path. And I learned a little bit, bit of it from watching people play my games in some of the game jams and some of the competitions that I've entered. And it really has helped my games tremendously so much. It has improved my games in a lot of different ways that I never thought was possible. And what it is, is the experience. Now, there's an entire industry called user experience and there are thousands and thousands of principles on, on how to improve different experiences. But let me break down exactly what I mean by the experience in a game. So when I first started in game development, I would start with a cool little mechanic or I would start with an art style or this idea for a story that I had. That's what I would start with building. And that works well enough for prototypes, right? Like you just wanna see if this mechanic works or this thing is fun or this jump works or whatever, that can work. But when you start building the game, understanding the core experience that the player will go through is very critical. Now, a lot of people, especially if they have a longer build time for their game, they work on the, the, the engine or the mechanics or the, the vertical slice, if you will, like the actual gameplay um, or the content or whatever. But understanding the, the, the whole pipeline that your player goes through, like, okay, He's going to double click on the desktop and open my application. He's going to see a menu screen. He's going to hit play. Then he's going to op see the opening cutscene. Then he's going to be in the game. Then he's going to go and do that. Like understanding that whole process dramatically increases your ability to make a great game and your, I think, your development uh, skills as a developer. Because a lot of people overlook that part, right? Like that first little part, what a lot of people don't realize is no one, like not no one, but most people won't finish your game. Finishing games is actually really rare. And a lot of people don't ever finish games. That's just the, the society we live in. And there are stats for that. You can look that up on Google. Like the overwhelming statistics are people don't finish games. So in reality, that first segment of your game is the most important part of the entire game. That is gonna be seen by the most people. That is gonna be the thing that either keeps them going or makes them quit right there. You have to understand that, right? If that part is frustrating, they're gonna they're gonna quit. You're not gonna have people that continue playing through that. Like it's a really bad negative experience to enter into something like that and just have it be frustrating right before you even get to play the game. You have to understand the process, right? So I use the beginning as an example because I think it's the most important part of the game. But how you make a great beginning to a game is understanding the experience that the player has. So it was really funny because I, I worked a lot in software development. I would build a lot of software. And there's a philosophy in software that you wanna decrease the amount of work it takes for, for a user to get anywhere in the application, right? Like for example, we had something called a three click rule, which there should be nothing anywhere in any menu that you it takes more than three clicks to get to. And that was really, really, really important for software because the whole point of software is to reduce the amount of work that someone has to do in order to take care of a task, right? And, and that was really important. But in games, games are a different beast. Sometimes you wanna artificially add barriers or issues or things that take them a long time uh, for the experience of the game. And if you are not aware of that whole entire experience from beginning to end, you, you can get really lost in adding what things those are. Because on one hand, you need to make something that's extremely simple, extremely user-friendly, and very easy for the user to navigate. But on the other hand, the entire idea of a game is just a series of goals, obstacles, and barriers. That's all it is. It's a goal, an obstacle, and like, if you don't have 
if you don't understand that experience all the way through, if you don't understand from start to finish, okay, at this point the player knows the objective is this, but they see the boss in front of them, they know they have to kill the boss in, in before they get to the door where the key is, if they don't know they need the key, that whole boss fight can seem meaningless, you know? Like, so understanding that whole process, right? The experience of what your player is experiencing, the emotion you want them to feel, the the thing that you want them to want, the objective that you place in front of them, understanding all of that, and understanding that every element of your game tells a story, and that if the stories are inconsistent, it can be really bad for your player's experience, right? There are so many games where I've personally played where the uh, the main enemy, the bad guy or whatever, is just, I don't think he's that bad of a guy. I don't really want to kill him. I, I don't, there's no reason for me to go out of my way to go and do the thing that they want me to do because the experience didn't make me want to go forth and do all that. And I think it's very important that people understand this aspect. And so, like, when I'm in something like a game jam, the game experience is the first thing that I build out. I actually build out templates in, in storyboard style of, okay, this is what's gonna happen, they're gonna open this up, they're gonna do this, then they're gonna do that. And I learned that because uh, there was one game jam specifically that I, I remember clearly. We had, we built this top-down shadow game. And I say shadow game, but it was essentially top-down, it was a dark room, you had a flashlight, and you were searching around the room and there was a monster, like a ghost monster, going around randomly around the room. And if he found you, he would chase you and you would see his footsteps. You wouldn't see him, but it was like a loud roar. And you had to find these three pieces of the key codes to actually get out of the door before this monster would catch you. Um, and this game was done for a horror game jam in October for Halloween. And we, we by far, like our team had the best game out of everyone. Like everyone, like, and that's not even ego speaking, okay? Like we legit, this game looked amazing. It felt amazing. It played amazing. But we didn't have any time to test it. It was just us testing the game before the actual reveal, before people would um, play the game. And this was an in-person game jam, so everybody would play all the games and stuff. Um, so... The thing that we learned when everyone started playing each other's game is we would sit people down, we would give them the controller, and they had no clue what to do. <laughs> they didn't know there was a monster. They didn't know there was key codes. They, when they found the key codes, they didn't know what to do with them. Like, it, it was just a disaster. And like, we, we did not get first place in the game jam, even though we had the best damn game specifically because we didn't think through the experience. Now, had we thought through the experience, even though we were pressed for time, there would have been a single little screen that says, the ghost is after you, run from that motherfucker, uh, find the three pieces of the key codes to get out the escape door. That's what it was said. If that little piece had been in the beginning of the game, and then they had played through the game, everything would have been significantly better. Like, it, it would have... Seriously, the game would have played so much better. People would have understood it. Everything would have worked better. We probably would have won first place and it would have been awesome. But that didn't happen because we didn't think through the experience. All we thought about was the game and the core mechanics. So that's my message for you. When you're making a game, make sure you think all the way through the pipeline. Make sure you really understand the user experience. Make sure you start with that emotion, that feeling, that idea that you want to convey. You know, just think through what the player is going to feel, what the player is going to experience, and really plan that out as the core part of your game. And then build mechanics and art and all that stuff on top of that, because that's such a better way to make a game. So that's all I've got to tell you for today. Once again, I'm Tim Ruswick. I will see you guys in the next video.